Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, poster children for the decline of American morality. As you can hear from my accent, uh, I'm not from around these parts. Uh, so I, I am, I'm, I'm an immigrant, and I think that's an example of immigrants doing jobs Americans just, just won't do anymore. So. The pay, pay is not good, but it's great fun being the poster child for the decline of American morality. So I want to introduce you to Nate, who's back there. I arrived this morning with all the wrong equipment, so uh, I have some slides, some things I want to show you. So I'm going to psychically communicate to Nate when each slide comes up, when each video comes up. So hopefully uh, you'll bear with me if the wrong slide comes up, or, but it's, it's all my fault we're arriving with the wrong equipment. So I'm not a stranger to Pennsylvania. I've had many, many, many warm welcomes here, um, especially with fracking. I, I did Frack Nation, the documentary about fracking. Um, <laughs> thank you. I, I, I bet there's a lot of Frack Nation supporters out there who've, who've actually given money to it, 3,300 people. Shout out if you give money. Yeah. yeah. So I want to show you, uh, obviously, fracking is a huge concern to Hollywood celebrities and New York celebrities like Yoko Ono and Susan Sarandon. And I want to tell you a story. And like most good stories, it starts in a bar. Um, I was in a bar in Washington, DC. I don't drink, but I was in a bar in Washington, DC. And um, someone told me, Yoko Ono and Susan Sarandon are headed to Dimmock, Pennsylvania tomorrow in a bus to look at the horror of fracking. Look at the, at the water and the, you know, you know, you know what fracking does. It kills your dog, kills your horse. Your wife doesn't fancy you anymore. All these things that <laughs> terrible. Maybe your wife just doesn't fancy you. Anyway, um, that's one of the things I often ask people. Maybe just you know, maybe 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 badness comes out. Anyway, um, so I went to the car rental place, rented a car, and drove down to to Dimmock, Pennsylvania, to greet Susan Sarandon and Yoko Ono and the anti-fracking activists. And does anyone here know Vera Scroggins? She's an anti-fracking activist. The liberal media describe her as a, a, a feisty old granny, you know, fighting to save her community. So I want to show you the last time I was here, or one of the last times I was in Pennsylvania about fracking, the warm Pennsylvanian welcome that I got from Vera Scroggins. So if we could play the video, it's a, it's a touching little scene with the, with the snow on the ground, Yoko Ono's in the background, and it's a warm Pennsylvania welcome. They banned it in your own country. Go ahead and get everybody they don't even follow your creepy Inside. ideas. It's okay. It is what he is. Miss Sarandon, would you lost. like? Miss Sarandon, would you like to apologize to the people of Dimmock? No, you can apologize and get lost. and um, I was there. Let me just get my slides up here so that I can communicate with Nate. Um, so I was in Pennsylvania, and I was in Philadelphia, and uh, if we put the first slide up, yeah. So, I, so as a journalist, I'm, I've, I was showing the film, Frack Nation, and I had a day off in, in Philadelphia. And like most journalists, what do you do on your day off? Uh, you look at the local newspaper to see what the local news is, right, and see if you can go to a press conference or a court case. That's what I do in my days off in cities. You know, I, I cover a lot of crime as a journalist. So I saw that there was a, in the local media, I saw there was a story on the Kermit Gosnell uh, trial. So I went down to the trial, um, you know, and like a lot of people, I don't think much about abortion, as, as in I don't think about it, because, you know, no one wants to think about it, and, you know, like many people, I would describe myself as agnostic on abortion, uh, which I'll come back to later. You know, I, I didn't have any strong pro or anti opinions on it, which, you know, I'll come back to that. So I went down and I walked into this trial of this doctor. And I can tell you now, I've covered the troubles in Northern Ireland. 
I've co covered crime in Ireland. I've covered post-communist Eastern Europe. I've worked undercover as a journalist in Vietnam. And I have n I've met Vera Scroggins, and I have never <laughs> seen more shocking evidence than I saw in this courtroom on that day. Never. In all the places I've been in the world, I came to Philadelphia, and I saw, saw the most shocking evidence I've ever seen. And I was sitting there, I just couldn't believe the photographs. Uh, you know, they showed the photographs, and the photographs were basically in the courtroom, with the size of this slide, they were just blown up of these, you know, there's no other way you could describe them only as babies, dead babies. Just no other way. You can't describe them as a bunch of cells, or zygotes, or, or whatever, you, whatever they want to call them. These were babies, these had personalities. They had hair, they had hands, feet, and everything else. So. I, was just, I just couldn't believe it. I had never thought about abortion. I didn't, I, I, to be honest, I didn't believe the photographs from the pro-life movement. I thought they were photoshopped. They're not photoshopped. And so, so I was watching it, and the damn equally shocking, you, you know what that, do you know what that photograph is? That's the photograph of the, of the media benches. That's the journalist benches at the Kermit Gosnell trial. So that was, I, think, I don't know which shocked me more. I think the photograph shocked me, but, um, but that is equally as shocking. This is the most horrific trial I've ever been at, and it w there was no media. If we have the next slide, please. But, of course, next slide, yeah. So, does anyone know who the person is on the left? Of course you all know. That's Jodi Arias. She killed one person, her boyfriend, in the shower. It was all very titillating, you know, as, as my, wife, my wife says, it, she says, we got a blow-by-blow -blow account of her sex life um, in the trial. My wife said, I always put those jokes on my wife. Um, <laughs> have you met my wife, by the way, Anne Michael Henry? Quiet lady. Yeah. Um, it, I was explaining earlier that I used to, uh, when I was a journalist in Ireland, my name was Phil and McAleer, was quite well known. Since I've moved to America, my name, I've changed my name to Where's Anne? Because everyone, everyone comes up to me, and instead of saying hello, Phil, and they go, Where's Anne? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, all, Jody Arias killed one person. Wall to wall coverage. Kermit Gosnell, America's biggest serial killer, zero. So, um, next slide. Um, I came back, you know, there was, the blogs did get involved, and I came back to, to Los Angeles to Anne and said, we got to do something about this. And I was suggesting all these things, and Anne, of course, said, we should, we, we need to do, so. well, first of all, she said, no, we're not doing anything, we're too busy. And then I, did the smart thing. I ordered the transcripts of the trial on a daily basis. I got the court reporter to send me the transcripts of the trial. It was $300 a day. But I th so and then I would email them to Anne, and she would read them. And uh, you only have to read the transcripts of the trial to, uh, to see, to just realize this is the greatest untold story. I just have to warn you, journalists are different, right? Uh, you know, I see this as a great untold story. And I mean great. It's just, a, it's a incredible story. It may be tough, it may be tragic, but as a journalist for me, it's just what I want to do. We're different. That's, that, we, we, we run towards these stories, not away from them, if we're proper journalists. But there's so many improper journalists around. Abortion, and, and don't let people tell you that people don't want stories about abortion. If we had the next slide, please, because I want to show you that this, that's the, um, that's the Sundance Film Festival. That's a a documentary called After Tiller. Uh, that's the filmmakers with the uh, three late-term abortionists, three of the most prolific late-term abortionists in America. They've made a whole documentary about them. They're heroes. They're absolute heroes. That's the, that's the Sundance Film Festival. They're all smiling. It's wonderful. So people, you know, there's, and then, next slide. Then they also made a movie called, which it, it, it's, it's actually labeled as the first romantic comedy about a, where a woman has an abortion. It's a romantic comedy. So they, they, they will push it. Don't let anyone tell you there's no, nobody wants to see about it. They're, they're pushing it. Next slide, please. You know, there's, that's a woman, she filmed her own abortion. They're pushing it. They want to make it part of the culture. Um, so, next slide. So, I just, you know, we just, I decided, we decided that we wanted to make a, a, a movie, a movie movie. 
that there was no way to, that this, uh, this was wasted on a documentary. This, actually, really what we decided was that, and Anne, Anne hates me saying this, but she's not here, so I'll say it, um, is that Americans, I, I think Americans love serial killers, you know? You put on your TV, law and order, criminal minds, law and order, criminal intent. Ted Bundy has five films about him, all, you know, Hannibal Lecter, you know, you can't get enough of it. And here's America's biggest serial killer, and there was no, no movie about it. So we decided that we'd do a crime movie, and anyone who donated to our Kickstarter campaign for the Crack Nation knows that's how we did it. We went to Kickstarter. So we've set up our little campaign on Kickstarter, and Kickstarter's big thing is we don't censor projects, we don't edit projects, we let, uh, we let creativity bloom. Creativity bloom. <laughs> First thing I should have known, realized was when the CEO of Kickstarter is a man, is a man called Yancey Strickler. Someone called him Yancey, right? Uh, you know, and he lives in Brooklyn. That should have been my first, uh, first warning. So anyway, we, we submitted our project in plenty of time for, uh, to Kickstarter for the Gosnell project. If you, next slide, please. And we got this response. So yeah, they want, the, in our project, so you put up your project description. We ask that the phrase of thousands of babies stabbed to death and similar language be modified or removed from the project. We understand your convictions and horror of this person's crime. However, we are a website, broad website used by millions of people. Our community guidelines outline that we encourage and encourage, I love this, encourage and enforce a culture of respect and consideration. They're going to enforce. See those words, enforce a culture of respect and culture. How do you enforce a culture of respect? If, you have to enfor if you're enforcing it, you're not, respecting my, you're not respecting me. You're not considering my feelings. <laughs> and we ask that the language be specifically be modified for those reasons. Well, I'm from Northern Ireland, and I won't tell you my response, because I, I know you're all good, God-fearing people out there, so I won't. But anyway, we had an official response, which was to release all these emails and go to a rival website. Uh, actually, so we, then we wrote back the next slide, we wrote back to them sort of pointing out, um, let me, pointing out that, that Kickstarter, on, uh, so we, we went to their, we went to Kickstarter, we put in a couple of word searches. What kind of projects do they allow in their enforced culture of respect and consideration? There are, there was something like eight movies about incest, 40 with the word stabbing in the title. Uh, I think something like 20 about rape. And they actually, in one of the projects, they actually had the, the body of a dead person as the main photograph. They had a li real live body. So, they did, so they're all open to all kinds of horrible, and, and by the way, that's fine. That's the, their right to have all those kind of, people want to contribute that. If they see, find, see a picture of a dead body and that, that makes them want to contribute, good luck. But, um, so we wrote them, pointed this out to them, and then they wrote, you know, um, and they wrote back again, again, script looks good, but phrases like thousands of babies stabbed to death and thousands of babies murdered. But this is the, I mean, we're, this is the grand jury said this. The grand jury wanted to charge Kermit Gosnell with the hundreds of the hundred babies. But, was, uh, but, they, but the police didn't want that because they didn't want the statistics screwed up. But one thing you don't know is that in Philadelphia, or you may not know, in Pennsylvania, there's a statute of limitations on infanticide, so they, they couldn't go back too far. So they thought he did thousands, but they could only charge him with, uh, with a few. So again, to comply with the spirit of our community guidelines. So we just said, um, we just said that, that we weren't prepared to, to do that. So we went to Indiegogo. Um, put, put it up, attacked Kickstarter, and really, since then, Kickstarter have since changed their rules that they no longer have any involvement in assessing the, the uh, consideration and respect of any uh, project. They put it up automatically, and uh, then, they, if they, then they look at whether it's objected or not, but it's, they, can, they can still take it. Well, oh yeah, one of the things was, maybe we'll, maybe we'll let you put it up, but we can take it down at any time. At our, at, our, at our decision. So they were gonna let us raise half the money maybe and then close the project. We just couldn't work under those conditions. So we went over to Indiegogo, which is a rival site that has no editing process or no curating process. They, they just put everything up. So the Gosnell story, I, I'll just move on. The Gosnell story is, 
is very serious. Um, if we move on to slide um, 22. Um, I mean, you all know, you probably all know the Gosnell story. Um, it, it would have died if it hadn't have been for, I mean, Kirsten Powers and her great article in USA Today. But I have to say, really what led Kirsten Powers to the USA Today article was the blogosphere. There was a massive amount of tweeting. There was a mass, people were writing directly to news organizations. They were writing directly to journalists. Molly Hemingway, a journalist, phoned up journalists in the Washington Post, said, why are you not covering this story? And someone, the journalist said, because it's a local crime story. You know, Trayvon Martin was a local uh, crime story. You know, if you, if Michael Brown Ferguson, that's a local crime story. They have no problem covering, national newspapers have no problem covering local crime stories if they tell the story they want to tell. So Kirsten Powers was great. Um, we, we launched the campaign. If we move on, say, um, to slide 28, and I'm running out of time, so I'll, I'll, I'll be very quick. Um, it was fantastic. We, we had an unbelievable response. Um, we raised $2.24 million, uh, 26,500 20, people one of the most successful Indiegogo campaigns ever. I'm sure lots of people out there have donated. Can I hear who has donated? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if we want, if you, if you put up the, the, the homepage now, gosnellmovie.com, please, Nate. Um, I want to show you something. So very, something very interesting has happened. Hollywood has become very interested in the Gosnell story. Uh, because and it's, it's not just that we, we came with the money which is obviously great in Hollywood because they like people who come with money. But they, we, we've come with something else. We have come, they've reopened, we've reopened the Indiegogo campaign. Uh, Indiegogo allowed us to do that. And we, people have continued to give money. And we now have 27,500 people who've donated, right? Um, and that is the figure that Hollywood is so excited about. See, see, I always say to people, there's two figures that are important in crowdfunding. Obviously the money, but you see up there where it says funders? That's what gets Hollywood really excited. 27,000, I can't even see how many it is now, 27, over 27,000 people have paid money to see a movie made. And those people will get 10 of their friends to go and watch the movie. And Hollywood's going, that's a ready-made audience. We'd be crazy not to, not to have this movie. So. The most successful crowdfunded film ever was, a, was Veronica Mars, a teen detective movie. And we are asking people, one thing we're asking people now is, is to go on there, thegosnellmovie.com, and give $1. See, they allow you to give $1. We don't want anything else. We just need that number of funders. We want, we want you to go on there and get three of your friends to do it as well. We want that to be 100,000 people, but only giving $1. We want, they're excited now at 27,000. Imagine how excited they'll be at 100,000. So that's, if you want to do one thing, don't give $10 or $20. I never, I never thought I'd hear myself say this. Uh, I don't want 10 or $20, I want $1. Anne will probably kill me. Um, <laughs> don't tell her, please. Um, so go there, gosnellmovie.com, just give $1, put and send it to three of your friends, make that 100,000. And you will see the Gosnell movie in all your movie theaters on Netflix. I cannot tell you, look, so as I say, I was agnostic about abortion before I started this. Um, but of course, you, no one's agnostic. You're not, when you are agnostic about abortion, you're pro-abortion. Let's be honest about this. You know, that's, you know. Um, so I, I tell you, I'm not now. And anyone who walked into that courtroom, anyone who sees the evidence, anyone who hears, and, and some of the best evidence, some of the best anti-abortion rhetoric and evidence comes from Gosnell's defense, because Gosnell's defense was, this is funny, it's not funny, but it's quite ironic. Gosnell's defense was, he had a brilliant defense lawyer, was abortion is a dirty, disgusting business. And here's how it's done. And he describes in excruciating detail what the media won't, do is describe how an abortion is done. And said, my client did, a, did it a little differently, but really he did the same as any other doctor. One of the most dramatic moments in the trial <laughs> is the prosecution brought in a good abortion doctor to show how it's done. 
And, uh, you know, you're a doctor, yes, and I've been 40 years in OBGYN, and I do mostly abortions. And they said to the, the doctor, and how many abortions have you done? And the doctor said, 40,000. And the jury did that, right? The jury did that. And then, we, we, it's in our script, that, that scene, and we had a script reading of Hollywood actors, Hollywood liberals, reading the script. And we got to that bit in the script, and uh, the actor, you know, with the table reading, just to hear how the script went, and the, the actor went 40,000. And the Hollywood liberals all went, <gasps> they couldn't believe it either. They, you know, people don't want to think about this. So that's why we're bringing it to them in a crime movie, not as an activist movie, not as a preachy movie, where there's nobody making speeches, there's nobody, there's just, it's just a courtroom drama of, of, a, of a really great detective and a really great prosecutor trying to get justice for a number of women and a number of babies uh, in a typical detective drama way. But the information that comes out and the defense that is mounted and the prosecution facts that are brought are, are truly stunning. Uh, and no one's ever done this before. It's, 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 we're, we're, we go in between getting really happy and really excited and crying because we unfortunately have had to read the transcripts of the trial. We've, had to, we've got all the documents and we're looking through the pictures and, the, and, and all that and it's, it's tough going but it's wonderful also. I mean, as I say, journalists are different. It's tough going but it's wonderful. We, we, we get immense pleasure out of telling this story because no one has done this before. So thank you for your support. I just need you to go and give a dollar. Um, I need you to tweet about it and Facebook about it. And then when it comes out, guys, you've got to do this. Look, you can't sit shouting at the TV. You can't sit shouting, shouting at the movie theater because you need to go and support movies that reflect your values. You know? You, uh, it's, it should be a pleasure. You know, I mean, the liberals have been making movies that support their values for 40 years, and there's bad, they all made bad movies at the start, and then they've got better and make really great movies. And so you've got to support uh, conservative movies, even the bad ones, you know, and then they will be get better as people learn their craft and as a group of filmmakers rise up. So support us. Support other movie makers. Support that documentary. Just, you know... Go on crowdfunding. Just give a dollar. It's, make a, it's like signing a petition, but it's sending a message to Hollywood and it's sending a message to the media that the censorship stops here and it stops now. And I want to see the truth told on my TV screen and I want to see the truth told on my movie screen because the truth will set you free. And, and what's wrong with the truth? Nothing. So thank you very much. Um, I'll be available afterwards for questions. Uh, I wish I could stay longer. I wish I, could sh I wish I could show you the video. Maybe, could we show the video or am I out of time? I'm probably out of time, but show the video. It's my You're an Irishman. Get lost. You're not even an American. Miss Sarandon. Do not speak to an American. Miss Sarandon, would you like to apologize to the people of Did the journalists there ask why other journalists are excluded from the press conference? You're not a journalist. You're, you're a, a, a journalist. backstabber you're a that lies to people to get their own. You're an Irish freak. Go drink, go drink. Go drink some alcohol. Some journalists are excluded from the press conference. Go, go get drunk and be an, a drunken Irish freak. <laughs> Do you think Irish, Irish people are drunk? Some of them are, and you're the why, epitome why? of it. You're an alien. You look like a alien. Look at the way you look. You don't, don't even look do human. Do. You look like a alien. That's what you look like. So maybe I have to chase you. I'm going to chase you the fuck out of here, out of my country, out of my country, and county. Do you not like immigrants? I am an immigrant, how about that? I'm a naturalized citizen, I'm an immigrant. My family is a bunch of immigrants. Most of them are immigrants. Any other questions I'd answer? There's nothing you can answer because you're a liar and a twister of the truth. What can you answer? What can you possibly They banned it in your own country. Go ahead and get everybody they don't even follow your creepy ideas. It's okay. It is what it is. If you're a warm welcome, um, <laughs> I'll continue to come back. And uh, thank you very much.